Transportation into the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Today, the House Government Operations Subcommittee on Employment and Housing met to issue a subpoena to former HUD Secretary Samuel Pierce. Subcommittee will please come to order. <clears throat> Before we deal with the matter of the subpoena, uh, the chair would like to place in the record a communication received last night from the U.S. Department of Justice. The letter reads in part, Dear Mr. Chairman, as you continue your hearings into improprieties in programs funded by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, I wanted to provide you with an update of the Justice Department's HUD investigations. As you know, the Attorney General has identified matters involving fraud against HUD and improper conduct by present and former HUD officials as ones that should receive priority attention. He has advised the United States attorneys who have primary responsibility for prosecuting these cases that they should expeditiously be reviewed and appropriate investigative and litigative steps taken at the earliest possible date. At the current time, criminal investigations are underway in virtually all of the department's judicial districts. 83 of the 93 United States attorneys have initiated over 700 criminal matters with the potential to involve into over 1,000 individual cases. The pending matters are comprised primarily of investigations of fraud against HUD in connection with mortgage insurance and rental subsidy programs. A large number involve investigations of corruption e.g. bribery or embezzlement committed by local HUD employees who administered HUD funds or by local <coughs> officials who were in receipt of HUD grants. As you know, investigative resources of both HUD and the FBI are utilized in these matters. The Attorney General has advised HUD Secretary Kemp the Justice Department stands ready to assist and cooperate with the HUD Inspector General in disposing of any cases he identifies. The Attorney General has specifically directed the U.S. Attorneys to identify any anticipated problems in handling the HUD caseloads, including inadequate resources to handle caseloads. Plans are currently underway to address resource needs that have been identified by certain officers. Finally, the Attorney General has made it clear that the Department's efforts must be closely coordinated and has assigned a coordination role to the Criminal Division, specifically as Director Deputy Assistant Attorney General Mark Richard to monitor the development and disposition of HUD matters nationwide and maintain close liaison with U.S. Attorneys, the FBI, and the HUD Inspector General. <clears throat> we appreciate your interest in the Department's efforts to identify and prosecute criminal activities in HUD programs by either private citizens or federal employees, and we welcome your continuing <coughs> support. <coughs> Excuse me. Sincerely, Carol T. Crawford, Assistant Attorney General, Office of, the Le Office of Legislative Affairs. Without objection, this communication from the Department of Justice will be entered into the record. We are meeting this morning to issue subpoenas to former Secretary of HUD, uh, Sam Pierce. A uh, duly constituted Congressional Committee has two mechanisms open to it to obtain testimony from appropriate witnesses. One method, which is clearly the preferred method by this subcommittee, is to obtain testimony on a voluntary basis. The subcommittee had a voluntary agreement by Secretary Pierce to appear before this subcommittee last Friday. As a matter of fact, that agreement was reached between Mr. Pierce, his attorneys, 
and the chairman of the subcommittee. During the course of last week, staff of the subcommittee worked diligently with Mr. Pierce's attorneys in an attempt to assist them to become familiar with uh, relevant materials uh, uh, to the hearing. <clears throat> the chair also agreed to restrict Mr. Pierce's testimony to just three topics. His previous testimony, the durham Hosiery mill case, and the coinsurance program as it relates to DRG. As an additional accommodation to Mr. Pierce, the chair agreed that the coinsurance matter will be discussed only through 1986. As a further accommodation to Mr. Pierce, the chair agreed that if any specific questions should be asked during the course of the hearing to which Mr. Pierce is unprepared to answer because of lack of documentation, he will be excused from answering such questions. <clears throat> During the course of Mr. Pierce's attorney's meetings with the staff of the subcommittee, it was pointed out to his attorneys that Mr. Pierce's prepared testimony on their subcommittee rules are to be in the offices of the subcommittee by 9.30 a.m. Friday. At the request of his attorneys, <clears throat> this deadline was extended to 1.30 p.m. In, uh, in the afternoon. There was no hint whatever that Mr. Pierce would choose on an arbitrary basis and on a unilateral basis not appear before uh, the subcommittee at the time agreed upon. On Friday afternoon, when the prepared testimony was not forthcoming, the chairman waited until close to 5 o'clock, at which time I placed a call to Mr. Pierce's attorney, who advised me that Mr. Pierce will not appear before the subcommittee. Voluntary agreements between prospective witnesses and duly constituted congressional committees are not social engagements to be broken in the last minute on a unilateral basis. The subcommittee, therefore, will have no option other than to issue several subpoenas to Mr. Pierce to appear uh, during the course of uh, coming weeks uh, so that uh, the subcommittee can properly conduct its investigation into wrongdoings at HUD. The chair would like to point out that last Friday's hearing was initially scheduled for the 4th of August, the very last day before the congressional recess at Mr. Pierce's request. And shortly before that date, chairman of the subcommittee was requested by Mr. Pierce to give him a continuance. A continuance was offered and given from August 4 to September 15. It is very difficult to understand how a person who headed the Department of Housing and Urban Development for eight full years without any interruption, and has been involved in the subcommittee's investigation since early May, having testified on May 25, who is a distinguished attorney, would be unable to prepare in all that time for a curtailed, circumscribed subcommittee hearing. It is also obvious, I suspect, that it is not the responsibility of the subcommittee to obtain counsel for prospective witnesses. Uh, if the argument is that if a witness does not select counsel, subcommittee cannot uh, uh, hold a hearing involving that witness, would open the opportunity for prospective businesses to procrastinate indefinitely the employment of counsel, thereby effectively frustrating the work 
of congressional committees. Under these circumstances, the, sub the chairman will uh, entertain a motion first to subpoena Samuel Pierce to appear before the subcommittee on September 26 or other date designated by the subcommittee chairman. Second, a motion to subpoena Samuel Pierce to appear before the subcommittee on October 27 or other date designated by the subcommittee chairman. And third, a motion to subpoena Samuel Pierce to appear before the subcommittee on November 3 or other date designated by the subcommittee chairman. Um, chair is ready to receive motions or any other comments from, from members of the committee. Congressman Lukens. Mr. Chairman, I just wish to add a comment before uh, yielding to others uh, to make the actual motion. It is with great reluctance, I think, that all members of this committee move to this action. It is particularly uh, so in my case that I don't really like to see subpoenas issued to people who appear to be voluntarily ready to testify. But in this instance, I feel the gentleman in question has had more than adequate time to prepare his defense. And as the chairman is so graciously referred to his extensive experience in law himself in eight inter uninterrupted years at HUD, I would think that he would know the severity and the seriousness and the far-reaching impact of these hearings on his life and on the conduct of business at HUD. I am therefore prepared to, if not enthusiastically, at least willingly support any motion uh, for these subpoenas and these actions uh, today. But I must say that it is a sincere regret that I find the committee uh, is in a position where it feels it has no other alternatives. Thank you very much, Congressman Frank. I don't want us to lose the chance to vote before we have to go vote on the journal if we do today, but I just want to say, having observed this process very closely, that the chairman and the staff under his direction have been extremely fair. Obviously, there are ways in which you can use the subpoena as a form of harassment. Uh, no remote suggestion of that occurs in this case. There have been postponements, there have been negotiations. I think that the chairman and the staff have been as accommodating as they can be. No one denies that there is relevant information that Mr. Pierce has uh, about what has happened at HUD and about what should happen in the future, which is an important part of our job in terms of our formulations. And we have no alternative but to uh, insist that uh, he testify. Uh, and the point is that if he doesn't testify, then others have the right not to testify. Um, there just doesn't seem to me to be any option. But I, did, I invite anybody to look at the record of conversations, negotiations. What they will see is a very, very accommodating posture on the part of the chairman and the subcommittee staff, and I think that fully justifies the subpoena. Thank you very much, Congressman Kyle. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to yield to Mr. Shays. Congressman Shays. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to make uh, three motions if it's the committee's will. Uh, I, I appreciate that very much. I think we'll ask our colleagues if they would like to make a comment before Congressman Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To me, it's regretful that rather than honor a commitment that Mr. Pierce made to you, uh, that he forces us to meet here today to issue a subpoena. It would seem inherent to me, at least, that in his obligation as past Secretary of HUD, having received, I believe, an adequate salary to do the work of the people, that he would have appeared last Friday to testify and clarify some of the contradictory and confusing testimony that we've had thus far. It also seemed that when the questions arise regarding his conduct, that he would, out of goodwill and conscience, voluntarily appear and testify. However, it's, it's apparent that the opposite is true. You know, there's two surefire ways of hindering the ability of the Congressional Committee to do his job. One is to refuse to testify, and the second is to take one's Fifth Amendment rights, which reports indicate Mr. Pierce will do. That does two things. First, it creates doubt, and the second, it undermines the ability of the Committee to determine just what went wrong and what, if anything, must be done to correct the situation. I, for one, am not happy with that situation. But it also keeps the general public in the dark as to whether this was just incompetency of the chief administrator or his malfeasance in office or just blind, blatant violations of the law or any one of a number of situations which may have been the core of the problems at HUD. You know, a, member's, a cabinet member's unwillingness to testify before a legally convened committee of Congress to provide it with the information it needs to affect the resolution of the problem 
and the abuse of power is contrary to all the rhetoric we've heard in the past, eliminating waste, fraud, and abuse. At the very least, this particular appointee seems to have perpetuated that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Congressman Weiss. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think that it should be noted that in addition to uh, the position that he held as a cabinet officer for eight years, uh, Mr. Pierce is not a naive or an innocent in regard to matters of law. He is a distinguished attorney, uh, has been both an assistant district attorney and an assistant United States attorney in the state of New York. He served on two separate occasions by appointment of the governor of the state of New York as a judge. He fully understands what the legal obligations are of commitments to appear to testify. And he understands, I think, that uh, his efforts really leave this committee with no option at all except to issue a subpoena. I think that the story in this morning's Times indicating that Mr. Pierce now is considering citing the Fifth Amendment may be a clue as to what's really going on here. Having come before the subcommittee on May 25th, and quite clearly stating that he was simply, he was very much of a, of a non, not no hands-on kind of manager that he delegated it. And having been contradicted in that repeatedly by other witnesses, I think he now fully understands the vulnerability that he may be facing. And so rather than coming forth and clearing the record and clearing himself, purging himself of any possible misstatements erroneously or otherwise, he, in fact, is toying with the subcommittee in effort to try to avoid and evade his responsibilities. I think that the chairman of the subcommittee has been more than fair to him, and I think we really have no option except to issue the subpoenas. Thank you very much, Congressman Wise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Like everyone else on the subcommittee, I've been horrified and shocked at the number and magnitude of abuses that have been coming forth at these witness tables. Uh, Samuel Pierce's last-minute refusal to appear before the subcommittee further reduces an already questionable credibility. I think it has to be pointed out that during the past months since he has testified in May, numerous conflicts have developed uh, that just have to be answered. He has claimed, for instance, in sworn testimony that, testimony that he never used his position as secretary to help connected lobbyists and developers receive HUD projects. It really is nothing short of amazing how someone who ran the department for eight years and claimed to have no knowledge of the corruption or any role uh, can testify and then have that testi testimony rebutted uh, by other witnesses coming forth. I'm holding, voting for this subcommittee, I am voting for this subpoena to hold accountable the person who was the highest official in HUD and who has, has to be held accountable. During the last eight years, he developed a reputation for a low profile. The subcommittee really would lose its credibility if it permitted silent Sam now to become stealth Sam. And so the people have a right to know, and silence must cease. And so I appreciate what the chairman has done, which is to take very seriously this responsibility to give every opportunity to Mr. Pierce to come forward. Uh, Mr. Pierce himself a lawyer and, and one who knows the procedures, one who's been under investigation for many months and conceivably would have secured his counsel long before now, and who in, in many ways I think is frustrating, uh, frustrating this committee. And so I will vote for the subpoena. Thank you. Thank and you I, very much. I would also ask that I be able to include a complete statement in the record. Without objection. Although uh, Mr. Schumer has not been a member of the subcommittee, he has been a very diligent and valuable participant in our hearings. wonder if he has any comments. Uh, the chair will now recognize Congressman Shays for making the motion. I'd just like to preface this by saying that this investigative committee cannot allow Mr. Pierce or his attorneys to impede the work of the committee uh, as Mr. Pierce impeded the work of the Inspector General in his basic delaying tactics with the Inspector General so that by the time the Inspector General interviewed him, it was on Mr. Pierce's last day. And uh, with that comment, I'd just like to move that we subpoena Samuel Pierce to appear before this subcommittee on September 26 or other date designated by the subcommittee chairman. Uh, the chair will call for um, uh, a roll uh, on this so we have everybody's vote. Clerk. Mr. Lantos. Aye. Mr. Frank. Aye. 
Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Wise? Aye. Mr. Lukens? Aye. Mr. Kyle? Aye. Mr. Shays? Aye. Let the record show that the vote is unanimous. The chair will now entertain a second motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we subpoena Samuel Pierce to appear before the subcommittee on October 27th or other date designated by the subcommittee chairman. The clerk will read the roll. Mr. Lantos? Aye. Mr. Frank? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Wise? Aye. Mr. Lukens? Aye. Mr. Lukens? Mr. Kyle? Aye. Mr. Shays? Aye. The record will show that the vote was unanimous. Mr. Chair will entertain a third motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to subpoena Samuel Pierce to appear before the subcommittee on November 3rd or other date designated by the subcommittee chairman. The clerk will read the roll. Mr. Nantos? Aye. Mr. Frank? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Wise? Aye. Mr. Lukens? Aye. Mr. Kyle? Aye. Mr. Shays? Aye. The record will show that the vote again was unanimous. Uh, this committee will uh, uh, meet uh, to hear the testimony of former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Sam Pierce, on uh, September 26, uh, uh, which is next Tuesday. The subcommittee will stand. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank you very much. Representative Tom Lantos of California, the chairman of this House Government Operations Subcommittee hearing on employment and housing, will be featured on our continuing series, American Profile. We'll bring you an hour-long interview with Chairman Lantos, October the 9th, beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern, that's 6 Pacific time. Coming up next, we bring you today's State Department news briefing. The cable television industry created C-SPAN in the public service. C-SPAN is funded primarily by cable television systems around the nation. C-SPAN also receives grants from corporate underwriters, including General Dynamics and General Foods.